Welcome to episode 231 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the Membership Director for Wealth Builders, joined today by our founder, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Chris. Good to be with you. And we've got a busy day today, haven't we? Yes, we sure have. We are hosting a webinar this evening. So uh, if you're listening to this episode, then uh, we've got two sessions. We've got one at lunchtime uh, starting at 12.30. And uh, if you can't make that, then we'll be repeating it again in the evening at 8 p.m. And the title of today's webinar is Unlocking a Source of Funds for Your Property or Business and uh, focusing in on the pension side of what we do, Kevin. Well, for most people, we're, by the way, we're doing two live sessions. Not One's not just a recording, right? That's correct. So so people can ans ask questions and we can answer them. So so that's good to know. Um, yeah, for, for the most part, and I've said this hundreds of times, I think, Chris, that for the for most, and we've got a review on this today, haven't we, that for most people, their pensions is the the most disconnected source of their wealth. You know, often underperforming, certainly under uh, overlooked, and we can help and we have helped thousands of people turn their pensions into something more interesting, whether it's pensions for property, pensions for trading, pensions for using their money for something they can be fascinated, interested, and uh, being able to add value. Whereas for the most part, you got a pension, you read the statement, you wish it were better than it is, and you put it back in a drawer and you go around the clock again. And you haven't built any knowledge, you've not built any wisdom, nothing to share, nothing to gain, and nothing you can do tomorrow to add any value. So turning pensions into um, a SAS pension, we've spoken many times about, just this ability to turbocharge the value by connecting with others, connecting with your family, connecting with your children when they reach 18. Just a fascinating and inspiring way to make pensions more interesting. And I never tire of talking about that. And two, two opportunities to do that today with several hundred people on each uh, who are there open-minded and wanting to learn. So if you are too, uh, come and join us. That's it. Well, Wealth Builders is based on the seven pillars of wealth. It's at the heart of everything we do and, and pensions is pillar number two. So come mm -hmm. and find out more about that asset that's often overlooked and uh, we'll uncover some uh, some exciting things you can do with your pension. You'd never thought that the word exciting and pensions would go together, but uh, come and join us tonight. Head to wealthbuilders.co.uk or the lunchtime session if that suits you better and uh, you can register for free. And uh, whilst you're on the Wealth Builders website, we've made lots of changes recently. We've launched our new membership levels this year, Kevin. So um, we've got blog articles, we've got videos, we've got information, we've got all the podcast episodes. So do go and check out wealthbuilders.co.uk if you haven't been there for a little while. Mm. I'm excited about that because we've made it more accessible, more affordable than ever before, because we just want people to get started, don't we? We've, we've seen that most people overthink what they need to do, trying to get perfect instead of just getting going. So we've made our selves and what we do just much more accessible. And uh, we hope, and we're definitely seeing that now, won't we? We're seeing an uptick in people giving us a go who perhaps might have sat on the fence. Now they're not sitting on the fence, getting splinters up their rear end. They're actually doing something about it, and we're, we're pleased about that. But, of course, our role is to not just have new members, but to keep those members making progress because they'll only stay for as long as we're adding value. So keeps us on our toes too, which I like. Definitely. Yes. And uh, we've always been about education, about support and about connections and connections and community. And uh, that's really the topic of today is talking about the business toolkit in one card. And uh, our guest today is Michelle Chevel. Um, but on the topic of networking, we also had a cash flow 101 game this week, Kevin. We've been really busy. It's our first live event of 2024. We had 50 people in London playing the Robert Kiyosaki cash flow game. And it was a great night, as always it is. Well, you do a great job, Chris. I know I wasn't able to attend that one, but I've attended previous ones. But a rip roaring success as it always is. And uh, I think the proximity of you and I living in London is good, but we need to get this out. So, what we'd love to do is if you're in another part of the UK 
and you want to help us get the cash flow game played we're willing to buy the games right so and they're not cheap are they about 80 quid or something to to buy the game uh, so we're willing to do that if you're willing to help us with hosting so whether you're a host already you're already acting in some way you've got a networking group you know a great venue you've got a good location and you're willing to put yourself front and center and be a little bit of a guide uh, learn the game learn how to give instructions on the game but want to give back and if you want to do that we'll be happy to support that and we asked that question didn't we in our wealth builder facebook group and we've got people in exeter people in bristol people in manchester people in norwich uh, lots of people north south east and west in the uk we're not taking it outside the uk right now we're a bit too tired to do that but uh we have had some requests from dubai so i'll probably hop on a plane sometime soon chris and do that but <laughs> Uh, but I'll do that one. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, the idea of getting more and more events because, yeah, it just gets people together, gets them playing. And the whole idea of that is it's both educational and informative. And you can also then play the game with your children with the cash flow version for children. So very, very helpful to get into this. And I think ideally we'd like to be the biggest cash flow game host in the in the whole of the uk don't we because everybody loves it when they play just so we get some great feedback and we always getting feedback on the night because uh, they're usually in the evening but uh, also we get uh, feedback online as well don't we so because yeah. you've done some online games too yes we did for our members we had online game as well last week so um yeah absolutely if you'd love to um be a host uh, we can come up, we can help you play those first games. If you think you can get a small group of people together, maybe 10, 20 people, then that would be a nice size. We can get a couple of games arranged and, um, yeah, we'll come to a place near you soon. And uh, one thing that I love when we do the cash flow games, Kevin, is we have lots of new people as well as our existing members and they come as strangers. And then when we're packing up the boards, you can't tear them apart they're they're exchanging numbers they're talking yeah. about business opportunities and i actually left because i had to drive back to to bournemouth but um most people were still there and they were networking and they were exchanging details and that leads us on really to our conversation today with our guest michelle because uh michelle and her husband mark are the co-founders of one card which is a digital business networking card yeah and it's a it's just a brilliant brilliant idea i mean Obviously, as a speaker, a lot, I'm carrying business cards and people say, can I have your card? And you're used to giving out cards, right? But, you know, they were getting dog-eared. I'd leave them somewhere or it just, just seemed more logical to explore a more digital version. And I came across one card and Michelle and her husband, and I think they're just not just lovely people, but they've got a great idea and their story is quite interesting. But... Um, you know, I've tried it myself and I'm super passionate. There it is on the video. <laughs> yeah. And also on the flip side, you know, so you could probably pick up the QR code. And what it what it does is allows me to tap on someone's phone, make the connection. But on there, it, it's got all my contact details, the website, the podcast, Facebook, LinkedIn, all that. But any documents that I want to store to say, hey, if you want to read that, do that at the moment. I'm just testing it with a petition. Uh, so the petition we've been supporting for the last uh, few months now, uh, proposed by the great people at Go Henry. More about that in a minute, actually, because it might be worth asking a question on that. I'll do it in the debrief, Chris. So you can store up to 10 documents that you might want to give to people in addition to LinkedIn, Facebook, website, podcast, all of those things. So just a fantastic and easy place and a modern place as well, because so much of the work is done nowadays with digital and tapping, right? We talk about tapping all the time. So to tap on somebody's phone and exchange details and let them download something perfect, really. I would encourage anybody who is looking to build connections in any way you want to do that to have a listen to the interview with Michelle. And if you're interested, follow that up with them. It's really no problem because uh, I just think it's a great idea to be more up to date and more professional 
in how you're networking because networking is so powerful and appropriate in, in today's world. Yes, and I referred to the seven pillars, seven different asset classes that you can use to generate recurring income. And pillar number five is business. So it's a really good story today of uh, a young business, only a couple of years old, and uh, you can see the growth and you can understand some of the lessons that Michelle shares today about um, early stage starting up new business. So uh, I think time for us to head on to our conversation today with the co-founder of OneCard, Michelle Shevel. Michelle, welcome to Wealth Talk today. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, we've been looking forward to having you on the podcast. Kevin has been talking nonstop about his one card, and actually I got to see it yesterday as well. So lovely branded card. It's got the Wealth Builders logo. So uh, we're looking forward to finding out all about one card and your business, Michelle. So um, why don't I let you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what one card does? Yeah, so I'm Michelle Shevel, uh, co-founder of OneCard, which is a digital business platform. Um, I would like to say that it's a, a business card, but it's a card that you do business with. So it's about sharing details more effectively than handing someone a piece of paper. Um, so you basically have one card, so you only need one. You tap it to your new contacts phone and all of your business information is transferred directly into your phone. So there's no room for error. No one can actually take your business card and start putting in numbers wrong. Everything is transferred from your address, from your email, website, all of your socials. And then there's lots of other functionality that comes along with that, that help you in your day-to-day -day business, um, such as you can book meetings, you can share documents. So we can actually help businesses go paperless, which of course we all want to be doing our thing for sustainability right now. Um, yeah, so which is why we call it a tool to do business with. Yeah, so um, it's, it's it's great concept. And who who would be the kind of people that are using this? We know a lot of our members are property investors and there's lots of property meetings that go on and everyone's, you know, swapping business cards in the traditional sense. So networking, I'm sure, is a major place where, where the one card can come into its own. And what would be some other uses of it as well, Michelle? Yeah, so of course it, it does come into its own in a networking environment. So it's perfect for anybody that it, you're wanting to share your contact details, but collect details as well, because it's an exchange of details from someone. Um, it's for businesses that want to just streamline that process too. So particularly if you've got sales teams out in the field connecting a lot, um, and in an exhibition environment. So again, you know, if you're um, an ex exhibiting and wanting to share details about your business and connecting with people quickly and easily, um, one great thing about the card as well is it helps you with automation. So it really helps you with business efficiencies. Um, you don't have to, once you've collected lots of people's new in contact information, like you're saying, at, networking events, you meet new people, you come away with a stack of business cards. What do you do with all that information? Well, one card actually basically integrates straight into a system where you can collect all of those contacts in a nice neat list. So all you need to do from there on in is get on and do your job and, you know, work with those people and keep, keep that connectivity going. So mm. it helps with all the, the automation and we all want things nice, simple, easy and efficient. And um, that's where it comes into its own. Absolutely, because uh, I know from my own experience of, uh, you know, networking, you'll give out, let's say, 20 cards you might give out. <laughs> How many people will you actually hit back from? Uh, you know, maybe one or two. But if you've got a system <clears throat> whereby, as you say, it's automatically syncing with your CRM and then you can have an email sequence. So by the time they get home or they're on the train on the way home, they've already had an email from you. Uh, it, you know, it looks so professional and obviously you're going to stand out from the crowd. Yeah, absolutely. And and that is the one that even just using it, you know, you, you use the card, you're standing out from the crowd straight away. Um, people are just quite impressed with the fact and it, it helps you um, connect in the way that people want to connect to because it's got all that functionality. So you can tap the card and save the details, but it can go straight to your LinkedIn or straight to your WhatsApp or you can go straight to your diary to book a meeting. So in the moment rather than waiting till you get back to your desk and then you try and phone someone to say look do you still want to have that meeting and they don't answer you know it, it stops all of that messiness really you're just you're in the moment you can control how you connect 
and how that person wants to connect. So um, I think it puts people at ease too. Yeah, and um, in terms of the the revenue model for you as a business, uh, talk us through you know how how it works. How do you generate an income from the one card yourselves? Um, so the the one card model is a subscription based model, so it's either a monthly fee or a yearly fee, um, which works with that. And then uh, alongside of that, I mean, the the whole reason why we do the subscription is that we want to give our clients as much value as we possibly can. Um, so as we're growing and things are developing with the cards, then you're included in that added value. We want to build in partnerships too, which actually adds on to our extra income, if you like. So where we might have a partner with a CRM system, then it gives another option for our clients to be able to give them a one-stop shop for all the connectivity. But as a business, we then got an added income stream from those partners too. And when did you found the business? When, how long has it been running for, Michelle? Well, it was a lockdown project, which is where we, we kind of founded and started. Um, we launched pretty quickly out of lockdown, um, but it's a very different tool today. So I think as we come out of lockdown, it was all about um, a contactless way of connecting with people. So you're going to be more efficient, but of course, no one wanted to touch anything back then, <laughs> even when we came out. Um, I remember one of our first exhibitions that we did where we were still wearing masks. Everybody was still very standoffish. We weren't quite embracing that one-to-one -one contact because we were still very cautious. Whereas the last 12 months, um, I guess, is where you know, we listened to the people that started working with us from the beginning. We've listened to what customers want as um, as functionality that is really going to benefit them and their business. And it's got all those extra um, functions now. Um, and people are embracing it more because, you know, the last 12 months we have all wanted to get out there. I think people have craved that one to one contact, getting back to, you know, in person networking. Um, because at the end of the day, I think there's, you know, it's great that what lockdown did for us in terms of this, you know, we can have this meeting from different environments, but I think there's not really any replacement for that one to one and building those relationships. I agree. And you're not new to business. So you previously <laughs> had a business in a different uh, sector. Um, so talk us through, you know, your business history, Michelle, and uh, what were some of the learnings from your previous business that perhaps you've been able to use when setting up OneCard? Um, gosh, so quite quite a journey. It's been quite a journey. So we started off as a um, cricket specialist. So my background was in retail. So I worked for um, retailers across the country um, from Scotland down to the South Coast. Um, and my husband and business partner is a senior project manager for um, major blue chip companies globally. Um, and um, he was a cricketer, just, a, you know, a village cricketer, if you like. But we decided to take his love of cricket and my love of retail and we created a, a cricket specialist. Um, but this was a retail store on the high street, but we wanted to develop something different. It was a, became a destination store. It was a store where you didn't just come to pick up your equipment. You could actually try out the equipment. It was an experience store where we had a bowling machine in there. And um, it was all about the building that full on customer experience, um, you know, where they got the full service from um, beginning to end really um that kind of ended and evolved into being a branding business which again sounds like a, a strange transition but while we were running the cricket business we decided to we were doing team wear because our cricket customers wanted their team wear and um we did all that in-house as we were doing branded clothing people asking us more and more for business clothing at the same time um, and it suddenly became apparent that actually the most profitable side of the business was the branding side. You know, the cricket was amazing. It was, and one of the learnings you just said, one of the learnings was, I think, if I look back now that our heart was really in it and we really needed to make some better business decisions. So letting go of that was difficult, but it was absolutely the right thing to do. Um, and I think that's that's one of the things when you are looking at business, you can just be too in it and too heartfelt to actually look at what is making you the right amount of money that you need rather than 
you know, being a silly, busy fool. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that was probably one of the biggest learnings from there. And out of the branding business, that's where One Card was born. So we were dealing with business to business. Um, we were offering, you know, business cards, leaflets, all the things for connecting with people. Um, and when lockdown came and my husband lost his uh, project management contract, it just made us look at what we offered to people in terms of connecting and how effective it was. Um, you know, you give somebody a business card, it's a piece of paper, they disappear with it. You've got no control over that contact from here on in. Not only that, the, the waste that's involved. I mean, it's incredible when you start looking at the figures. There's 80% of the business cards go in the bin because people lose them whether they want to keep you or not. Um, and the amount of waste in terms of paper that businesses use, um, that awareness is, you know, coming a lot more now, isn't it? Um, but we, so we started looking at where we can make a difference in terms of offering a more effective um, connection tool, which is what One Card is. So that's where it was started, really. Brilliant. And one of your largest clients, I know you told me, has over 160 staff. So um, I'm interested in the first year of one card because the first year in business they say is the mm -hmm. hardest you know and um to make it through that first year is is a milestone in itself how did you go from having the initial concept the idea to actually validating that and then uh, you know onboarding new clients and customers and um just talk us through you know how you went about those first 12 months um so so yeah i think it's important that you know we didn't come out straight out with a product and just think oh this is great because we'd already got a customer base from the branding um, business we kind of got a room to test so we could introduce it to a, an existing customer base and the the right customer base the kind of people that were wanting to connect etc so we very quickly got a lot of really good feedback from from people so we could understand what they what they needed um, so I guess that was the first point of call is right. Well, that's that's we've got a customer base already. How can we sell to them? Um, looking at what we'd done before, we were already used to finding that reach out to find new clients as well. Um, being creative in in how we do that as well, um, you know, to get that that outreach. Um, and then when we started getting those clients on board, I think, like I was just saying, it was kind of listening to them and understanding what their pains are in their everyday and how this tool could actually help them to be more efficient. Um, the reason why we then started working with teams was one of our very first clients. They had a quite a small team of like about 10 salespeople, but it very quickly became apparent that, you know, as a business, you don't want to be giving people this amazing tool and controlling the information on there. You need to be compliant. You need to understand that your staff are sharing the right information for the business. So we built a Teams platform, which is perfect for enterprises that's centrally managed. So you can control what information is sent out to amongst your staff. Um, and where you've got businesses where you've got a uh, higher turnover of staff as well. So there's a lot of waste involved in that. So when someone moves or even gets promoted, you don't have to throw away anything. You just centrally manage the system so they keep hold of the card. And um, so it helps the whole business become more efficient and, you know, uh, quite a big cost saving, really. But these things were all born out of listening to uh, what our clients really needed and then moving it from there, which meant that we could deal with a customer that had got 160 staff and provide them with the right platform that they needed. Yeah, uh, I love that. I think that's a really great concept. And I imagine when someone experiences this, so you're at an event and someone pulls out the one card and taps it and there you go, all the information is, is suddenly in the phone, that it's very much a word of mouth and people ask, well, where did you get that from? Or how can I get one? So um, are referrals and, and, and like affiliates, is that part of your marketing strategy as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like exactly like you said. So we're very, our very first uh, group of customers, if you like, were a lot of them were from the engineering industry. And that was because one of our first major clients was in engineering. They exhibited, uh, um, uh, with lots of other engineering businesses who recommended us. Um, so yeah, so built in as an individual, when you come to us, um, purchase a one card, you have the option to become an affiliate because it is quite natural that when you're using it, 
people are wowed by the situation. Wow, where can I get one of those? And we like to just give a reward to people for passing that information on so they can use their affiliate link to um, promote one card and get a little bit of earning themselves from it. Yeah, great. And uh, and what's your user base at, at the moment, Michelle? The user base is, is probably about um, 800 at the moment. Um, and of course, we've, we've got quite ambitious targets for this coming 12 months. Um, so we're busy working very hard on that. We've got, um, you know, our um, roadmap, if you like, on what we want to. We don't, we've developed a lot. So we're trying to rein in the development. There's things that we do want to do. There's some really exciting things we're launching in the next couple of months, um, which I think will be even bigger game changer for, for businesses. Um, but that's that's coming soon um yeah. <laughs> yeah and hopefully that'll assist in us reaching those higher targets as well mm. and uh it's still a small team at the moment you mentioned your your husband business partner co-founder mark um who else is in the team you're obviously a tech company you you, you have an you know app and development and software that's involved here yeah, so it is a, a very small. There's just my, myself and my husband who is, is the technical drive, if you like. And then we have our technical lead, Sean. Um, and then other parts of the business we do outsource as, um, you know, as, as we need it, really. So that we can be more fluid with things. What we find there is as well that because, because everything is in-house, then we can react very quickly to what customers need we can build what they require to. So um, like we're just looking at doing um, an exhibitors platform. Well, we have done, we're not looking at it. We've done it and launched it and it's in our first um, exhibition organizers events running throughout the year. Um, but that was an ad adaptation of the Teams version that we do. But we're able to, again, just make those slight changes very quickly. It means that we can bespoke items as well. So things can be fully branded to businesses um and just work um with them very quickly yeah no that's great it's a it's a problem that exists which you're solving which has an environmental impact mm -hmm. uh which is fantastic and a recurring income model which mm -hmm. we absolutely love as well so michelle if someone's interested in finding out a bit more about one card obviously we're collaborating with you now uh, as well mm -hmm. but um where, where could somebody go if they wanted to uh, check out the one card for themselves so yeah, so you can head over to our website where most of the information is on there, whether you're an individual or the corporates that we were just discussing. Um, you can have a free demonstration. So on the website is onecards with an S dot co dot UK. Um, you'll see on the front page there, you can go straight to all the information you need, booking for a demonstration, which is just 30 minutes, so you can understand exactly how it works for you, um, no matter what size of team you are. Thanks for being a great guest on Wealth Talk today. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great stuff from Michelle there. Congratulations on uh, everything that she's doing, along with her husband, Mark, and, and Sean as well. So a small team there. And we'll dive into some of the lessons that Michelle shared with us, Kevin, before we do that, as we like to head on over to Trustpilot and give it a shout out to those that have taken time to leave us a, a lovely review. And uh, I'm going to pull one out from Adam that's come in this week. And Adam says, joining Wealth Builders was the best decision I ever made. I was looking for structure and guidance on how to get my house and business in order as I felt like I was all over the place. Wealth Builders helped massively by working through the roadmap and pulling all the pieces of the life puzzle together. Would highly recommend to anyone looking to secure their future. Nice one. And I like the couple of points that he makes. It's always interesting to see the lens that's coming from somebody else's perspective. So all over the place. And we see people always all over the place, Chris. They're looking for the best thing, the the ideal solution, the magic bullet or some, or getting themselves into overwhelm and overthinking things. So having a structure that's easy to follow, having a process that's easy to follow, means you don't get into that position of being so overwhelmed. And when you've got a busy life, a busy business, a busy family, busy job, it's difficult to separate these things out. And therefore, most people just don't start. And 95% of the population don't make a start, Chris. They just accidentally get what they get when they reach 
their late 60s and so on. It's just just an incredible waste. So getting people to move towards that income security and then on to independence is just a great thing for us to do. So we love doing it and uh, we glad that other people are getting the result that they want, which vindicates what we do, really. Mm. Our goal with our members is to help them first to achieve financial security and then to move onwards to financial independence. We know that in order to do that, Kevin, you need to stop trading time for money. You need to own or control assets that generate recurring income. And Michelle has created a recurring income business here. But interesting to hear the backstory yeah. because as with many business owners, it's not their first business, right? They've, they've evolved, they've changed. And that's the story here with Michelle. And it came out of actually a passion initially with the cricket, where they both started that business and they loved cricket, but then obviously a business grows into <laughs> its different shapes and forms. And, um, and they learned many lessons along the way. I think it's true of anybody who's building wealth, there's a journey of transformation. And that transformation means you reinvent yourself several times. I've been through that journey, you know, so we all know that. So uh, it's interesting to see that perspective from from what they're doing. And the three things that, that I always say are critical when you're looking at a business, if you're going to buy one or create one, is are you outstanding in a niche? What a niche, lovely niche, right? I mean, if you're into property, for example, and we meet a lot of people, 70% of our wealth builder members choose property as, as probably their primary way of building wealth. And we've talked about why in previous podcasts. So everybody in property is meeting other people in property because there are so many networking meetings in property. Well, what, what would be better than turning up with your one card? You know, mine's branded, but you, you don't have to have a branded one. Um, that just makes it so easy for you to do that. People go, oh, that's interesting. You know, so I think there's a fascination with that there, but this whole evolution of number one is, are you outstanding in your niche? Definitely they are. Number two, is there a recurring income business model? Yeah. And if people keep getting value from the use of the card and networking, they'll continue to pay, which will serve the business as a recurring income model and can it work without you. Now, not every business can work without the owners at the start, but in the end, the more you develop systems, practices, processes, teams, and leverage, then the more that you're able to divorce yourself from the need to be the doer of the work, because you understand the work, you've got your minimum viable product, and of course they have. I mean, how many members did they say, 800? Yeah. You know, if you've got 800 of anything, you've cracked it. You know, We often talk in property with, you've done three, you've cracked it. So they've got a minimum viable product, and I love it, and definitely would, on anybody who's networking, wants to build connections to give it a try and go and visit the website. And, or, or maybe there's a link we can put in the show notes, Chris, because um, then it's just easy, isn't it? And, and the people at one card can see that their good work of putting themselves out on the podcast actually did some good for them. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I have the links to the today's show notes and um, just mirroring really the journey that we know everyone has to follow if they, they want to achieve security and independence with our nine step roadmap that we teach. And um, not only do you have to choose the right asset class for you, and obviously we're talking business today, but then you have to find the points of leverage within your life. And there's different types of leverage. We did an episode way back, episode 11, um, where we first talked about leverage and and the the acronym f-i-r-s-t so we won't spoil that too much i'll i'll point people back to to listen to that episode but we know leverage of software and systems so that's one area that of course uh, michelle and, mm. and her team are leveraging um but leveraging relationships of course here as well and um she talked about just the power of connection not just in what they're doing with one card but also the support that you need as a business owner and having the right mentors and guides, which she said was really important to her. Mm. Well, the other leverage is leverage of time, of course. So, you know, having to scrap around, finding cards, saving money because you're not printing cards. Um, I know she mentioned that. But the thing for me is the fact that I can store documents on this. So if, if you imagine, not to do with wealth builders, but I'm a property owner, I think this is huge value for people doing property. And and I've created and spent some time. We've previously done a podcast, Chris, um, 
number 74, how to be investable. And uh, we talked about the five different ROIs in there and how to create documents which were compliant and compelling. Now, everybody who is looking to succeed with raising the leverage of capital needs to develop the art of uh, crafting something which tells the story of their business so potential investors understand it. Well, what better thing could you do if you're networking is to have the the document stored on your card. So if you do that, you don't have to remember tomorrow to send the proposition to Christian Rodwell. It's done automatically. So I think there's some real good leverage here that uh, anybody who is making connections uh, could apply. If, if you don't make connections, it's not for you. That's fine. But But I think there's some value in it. For anybody who's out there, um, and we love to network, we love to connect, and um, lots and lots of fun and enjoyment is, is is done in those meetings. So just get better at doing it, I think. Yeah, and we love to give little sneak peeks now and again, Kevin, and perhaps we could give a sneak peek, although not visually, but uh, the upcoming Wealth Hub that's uh, near completion now, which should be accessible for our members initially, and that's the one-stop shop for all the connections that you might want when you're building your wealth. Yeah, on the journey to wealth, there's so many different routes you can take. There's a myriad of opportunities and that's why people get confused and, and overwhelmed. But nonetheless, everybody's gonna go on a slightly different journey. So what we've done is really created a hub, a center of excellence in other words, where the best people we know who are outstanding in their field uh, provide some benefit, enhancement, discount to our members in order for them to be connected to someone that we uh, have put some time into the relationship. It doesn't mean we're guaranteeing a success. We can't do that. That's life. But um, so whether it's a tax position, a legal thing, um, whether it's a skill set that you don't have, whether it's a guide to help you achieve one thing you don't know how to do. In the principle, remember, We've spoken about before, Chris, and it seems like a lot of things we repeat, but you know, repetition is the is the real at the heart of all of this. So it keeps reminding you, oh yeah, do that, do that. That uh, the who, not how principle. That whenever you come across a problem, when you're stuck with a how issue, there's always a who. And what we're trying to do in the hub is build a a big black book of who's that you can tap into that we've curated that who we believe are the best in class in their field and that's that what we're doing now on the i did say i'd mention something we touched on earlier on chris which is um an additional thing that we're doing to the podcast which is we're creating a new um what would we call it a sort of a, a sub an additional bonus right what do you want to say? I said a sub brand of Wealth Talk. It's, it's a it's well, a not necessarily a brand, but but just um, I suppose we talked about transitions, and uh, we were chatting to one of our colleagues earlier on, one of our members earlier on, who's now moved from doing sort of buy to lets to HMOs, and now doing care homes. And you can see there's a continuum of of knowledge and skill and application and connections in order to do that. So what I, what I thought I'd do is try and meet the people who are really at the, almost like the elite of their field, the CEOs of businesses that you go, wow, right? And who are they? Who are the CEOs? And create a, a, a version of the podcast or just occasionally because you can't just jump on these people and get them quickly, but to find uh, what we're calling head to head. So me as the CEO of Wealth Builders meeting another CEO of a business that our members want to hear from. And uh, we've chosen uh, certainly for one of our, uh, our one of our early ones, uh, the CEO of Go Henry. Um, her name is Louise Hill. <clears throat> and, you know, the fascinating story they've been through, which is, you know, from an idea in a, a few parents in a curry house in Limington, a dozen years ago into a multinational business serving six million people in five different countries from one idea which was how to help children do a better job and give them the ability to learn a little bit about money 
and at the same time have parents to have more control with the prepaid card. And that's the story of Go Henry. And we're interviewing her, I'm interviewing her. I know you're helping me, Chris, just to make sure we do all the tech right. But, uh, and I'd love to know if you had um, Louise Hill in a dinner table with you, what do you want to know? You know, I've got a bunch of questions and she's going to feel definitely that, you know, we've done our best to get as much juice from her experiences as we can. But what would you want to know? And uh, if you can let us know, uh, you can tell people how to do that, Chris. But also if, uh, other than that, if there's a CEO of a company you rate and you appreciate and you think, wow, I'd love to know more about their story, let us know. And uh, with enough interest, we'll try and pick those up too and, and start to build a series of those. So uh, looking forward to Louise <clears throat> and looking forward to any questions you've got and uh, any other suggestions for other CEOs that you'd love to have in the chair uh, talking with me. So, uh, Chris, how would people do that and make their suggestions or pose their questions? Yeah, if you use email, then send us an email to hello at wealthbuilders.co.uk. And uh, if you're a fan of the socials, head to the Wealth Builders accounts, be it Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, send us DMs to any of the official Wealth Builders accounts or maybe even scan Kevin's one card that's on screen at the moment if you're watching the video recording of this interview. Yeah, and you can send me a, you can send me the question on LinkedIn or Facebook or email or through the website. So you'll have all my connections there and uh, looking forward to seeing if people pick that up, Chris. Mm. Um, I don't know how to speak a QR code. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what suggestions we get. And uh, yeah, you know, great for us to go out and um, get some, you know, really high quality, fascinating business owners on the podcast in the head to head. Yeah, coming soon. All yeah, right, looking forward to that. Yeah. So that was a good session, Chris. Yeah, that wraps up today's podcast. So thanks, as always, for listening. We uh, whether this is your first Wealth Talk episode, or your 250th, if you're keeping up with us, then um, it's always great to have your ears. And please do help us spread the message. Um, all the help we can get to get this into the, the ears and, and uh, hands of people who would really benefit from a little bit of extra knowledge around finance, be it for themselves or for their families, their children, then hit the share button for today's episode and uh, send it to a friend. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, we'd appreciate that. And even if you don't do that, if you take a moment like we had a moment ago when you read out a review, Chris, just take 30 seconds, one minute and just say, hey, I'm loving the podcast, guys, or hey, you could do a better job if you did this. You know, we'd, we'd love to know what you would like us to do. So uh, we don't do the podcast for money. Uh, we don't get paid by anybody to do them. We do them because we just love to share information that if one of those episodes or one of these episodes serves as an inspiration for you to get off that fence and do something, even if it's with somebody else, could be one of our Wealth Hub members, for example, we'd love to know that. We'd love to help you do that. So. So thanks for listening today. Kevin, you and I will catch up same time, same place next week. We will indeed. Until then, my friend, see ya.